There is so, so much new stuff to talk about. The Bazaar almost looks like a polished and finished game with the amount of new stuff that was added. We've got the rarity system, the hero stats, the spells, the new events, the archetypes. There's so much to cover and more. So without further ado, let's take a look at the must takeaways from the June 2021 Bazaar updates. First things first, let's talk about the new rarity system. Uh, this is replacing the old level system where you would level items from 1 to 30. Merchants would slowly get higher level items throughout the game. And at the end of each day, you could pay increasing amounts of gold to level your items up. This old system was designed to encourage pivoting. Auto battlers get stale and you feel like you can't really develop or switch out and you're stuck with the build that you've got. Go see our level system videos in the past that deep dive into that. The old process wasn't particularly fun though and caused a number of complex number crunching problems as items had to have levels from 1 to 30 with varying stats between. So this has been reworked. By reducing this to three levels, now known as rarities, common, uncommon and rare, they were able to make these new levels feel more impactful and make the game easier to read throughout. It wasn't necessarily what I thought in our rarity system video though. Each card doesn't have its own common, uncommon and rare version and I can see why that triples the number of cards they would need to make for and balance throughout the game, from 5 to 600 at launch up to a potential 1,800, plus any additional sort of NPC cards or monster cards or whatever they want to put in. Instead, this now partitions the item pool. You only get rare items later in the game. Now you're still encouraged to constantly switch out throughout your run, as you'll see awesome rare items later on. They are about to run a test with just common and rare items, as uncommons did just kind of feel like common cards that you couldn't buy in the first day or two. They didn't have a huge amount of impact over their predecessors, and it drastically reduced the amount of card variety you had at any given point in the game. This didn't necessarily feel great, and I can't agree more, based on the ideas that we've been throwing out of late. Day 1 variety is pretty important. So the next time we see the level system, or rarity system, the majority of cards will be common and available early on in your run, with a few cards at rare appearing later on. My only worry is that with so few and incredibly pivotal rare items that you'll be able to force a late game build. But if few people really get that far, maybe it's not particularly a problem, and this is actually a fun way of doing it by rewarding them with a fun and instinctual build to go into. But as you will see with other new fun things like stats and archetypes, the late game build variety should be pretty good, despite only having a few rare options. Now let's take a quick look at the gameplay, and by quick I mean, well, I'll try and make this quick. There are so many small changes that have come along to improve the gameplay itself. So let's take a look at how the exploration phase is sort of spread out now. You almost always get a choice of what to do during these exploration phases. You aren't locked into a monster battle or upgrade at any single point. Instead, monster battles can appear as options alongside merchants, or certain events can even trigger a second choice where you either fight the mercenary or hire them for extra strength. Which, by the way, is a stat because stats now a thing. Alright, let me break this all down just a little bit. Monster fights are a more regular option now. You can test your build more frequently, and monster fights have become a larger part of the general core gameplay loop, rather than this important section in the middle of the day. Monsters are more interesting too. They now have their own unique hero power, which makes them play in a unique and interesting way. Although the team intend to take this even further with potential monster-specific items that they use in battle. There are a couple of toxic monsters which remove max health or steal money, and there's probably a few other options out there. I have faith that the team will try and make sure these are fun, and if they're not, potentially remove them, but that is the only encounter I'm possibly worried about so far. Otherwise, all the new events look great. The events you see at all stages of the game will also be different. The later into the run you go, the more wide a variety of events that will appear. Such as cake shops which sell a bunch of, well, cake that help you increase your max health. Or a shoemaker who increases speed. Speaking of which, there are now stats in the game which apply to your hero directly. Think Dungeons and Dragons or Skyrim or any RPG really that lets you boost your strength to make you go burr. Now in the bazaar, there are many items or spells which will boost one of your stats displayed to the left hand side of your character. Incidentally, debuffs in combat are displayed to the right. Buffs include things like speed to make items charge faster, regeneration which will tick healing like sort of reverse poison, and strength which increases your damage dealt. 
You can also get permanent armor, which is applied to you at the start of every fight, and there's probably so many more that we didn't get into, or that they're working on currently. Now, the astute of you may have spotted another new thing while I was discussing stats too. Spells are back in the bazaar. These are now one-time effects, which seem to typically affect your hero stats. They also don't seem to follow the pricing of regular items. Each merchant will now offer a zero-cost spell, which the team found more fun than a skip option, 100% agree. But there are also some merchants selling spells for potentially crazy amounts of gold to give you huge boosts. Keep an eye out for them in future gameplay. They include merchants like the Shoemaker and Cake Shop, though. The last new major gameplay feature we saw, as far as I'm aware, was subtypes, or archetypes as I know them. The aquatic subtype is one that Vanessa can buy into, which seems to include a number of sea creatures and sea structures. With regards to this example of aquatic, there wasn't a crazy good synergy between the items themselves. You can slide them into almost any build and be happy, or many of them will actually be more at home with other builds. But we saw one key item for aquatic, the dam, which did extra damage for every aquatic item you owned. This single card creating an archetype is something Raynard touched on on his archetypes video from years ago. Big thanks to the community for pointing this out to me. Don't forget to join them both in the Discord links below. So, it is good to see that their design philosophy hasn't really changed over the years, other than them just realising they wanted to design something new and something fun, rather than sticking to the very typical deck builder. We now have this sort of deck builder, auto battler, whatever the bazaar is. Anyway, I digress. I believe there is more than one archetype currently, although we've only seen Aquatic, and I doubt they're all based around this sort of single card mechanic from what Raynard broke down in that video. I recommend giving it a watch, I will see if I can remember to link it below for you guys. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about in this quick breakdown, I tried to make it quick, I do apologise, uh, is the user interface slash homepage, game client, there are a lot of just changes in general to the client itself, but many of them were pretty fucking good. Starting off with the homepage itself, we may actually get, Raynard didn't confirm this, he said no promises, but we may get a day-night cycle just on the homepage, not in the game. This was something from the original Bizarre Concepts ages ago that many of us would find pretty cool, but I guess maybe not for the actual game. This will be on the homepage, uh, where you may see it go from day to night, depending on what time it is, where you are. Uh, it's a pretty cute thing to add. Anyway, on to the real stuff. Uh, there is now a marketplace area of the game client, where you can buy and manage your classes, skins, boards, toys, and music in the cosmetic section. There were also menus for stats, previous games, collection, achievements, heroes, loot boxes, and currency. I don't really know what any of those are, we, we can make some guesses, and hopefully those aren't true loot boxes. Um, here's, a, here's a rant I prepared earlier. Vanessa Elf cosmetic? Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm all for it. I absolutely love seasonal things. Battle passes have been brilliant for the gaming world. Because don't forget, before we had things like battle passes, the, the hype thing to do, the, the, the best marketing strategy was fucking loot crates. I'd rather not. I'll take my battle pass, thank you. Because that's a win-win, right? I know exactly what I'm going to get. And sure, you're going to hide the best bit of it at the very end of the battle pass. And that's going to make me play your game, so you're going to have higher numbers of people playing your game. But I fucking enjoy your game, so joke's on you. I'm going to get that cosmetic. Anyway, besides my love of battle passes, uh, Stell was also notably missing from the list of heroes in this client. So, this has been, I think, the second time we've seen Stell missing. Are we now only getting five classes with Stell after launch, or are we still getting the six classes? Who knows? This is entirely speculative, and of course would reduce the number of options we have to play at launch, but... If that's what it takes to get the game out this year, I'll take it. The new in-game UI itself, moving away from the homepage, is super fucking slick. The cards are nicely put together in the center of the screen so your eyes can rest on one place. It is tilted towards us so your cards look nice and big. There is a physical market that flanks the NPC that you sell to making you feel more in the bazaar uh, where you can actually sell items to as well. And the turn clock that we looked at before is almost exactly as awesome as we thought. Go check that video out below. Uh, we go through the entire clock and actually 90% of what my general assumptions were were correct. There is just so much new UI from all of this to new tooltips. Most of the artwork now being finished. There's a slightly fancier battle animation and so on. Don't worry, real battle animations will be coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. And don't forget to subscribe because as soon as we see those incredible animations for all of these effects come out, I'll be sharing them all with you guys. 
The one thing I would change about the current UI would be another notice of item rarity. Currently it's just denoted by the price tag. Common cards were one gold, uncommon were two, and rare were three. But a color on either the price tag or the card itself would be great. Especially if we're just having common and rare cards, making the rare cards very extra would help them sort of spot them out and show newer players that, hey, this card's kind of awesome. You should probably at least consider buying it. There's a lot more polish in general to come. What they have in the works for this final product is supposedly incredible. At least that's what Reynard assures us. So we'll have to wait and see, considering it already looks pretty fucking awesome. My biggest takeaway in general from the entire thing is that Reynard has started playing this playtest version of the Bazaar for, as he puts it, funsies, playing it in his own time. As a content creator, I understand burnout. It actually can take quite a lot for you to play the game that you cover more than you actually need to for work purposes. And this guy flat out designed the game. I'm sure he'd like a break if possible. And he has done so plenty of times. We see him hanging out in the Discord, constantly playing other card games. But these last couple of weeks we haven't. These last couple of weeks he's been seen playing the Bazaar. So no, he doesn't want to break from the current build. It's just too fun to put down. And that really does go a long way to say where the Bazaar is in its current state. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We are sure to be getting a lot more Bazaar content coming soon, with Reynard potentially hinting at streams and even potentially hinting at another update next Friday. So subscribe to make sure you get all the information from us. We'll be deep diving into anything and everything they say. I'm sure he's uh, scared of me by now. I have been Gainsley Greg, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao. I'd rather be a dreamer, I'd rather be free, I'd rather be a leader, I'd rather be a queen, I'd rather be a singer in a trashy cover band. I'd rather be a closer, I'd rather be clean, I'd rather be a poser in a magazine, I'd rather be pretty much anything else than your machine.